welcome to um, the, uh, I've lost track of the numbers, the next episode in our uh, Dharma Outreach series, Dharma Talks. Um, you lucky people have got myself and Marshall back and also a very special guest, um, uh, Blake joining us today. Blake, thank you so much. We really appreciate your time. Thank, thank you. Um, Marshall, I don't know if you want to kick off with uh yeah you know I'll, I'll i'll kick this thing off um so blake is a good friend um and i met through mutual friends a kindred spirit actually uh i think a, a person that we know said like you got to meet this marshall guy you remind me so much of him and yeah, that's uh how it started and the funny thing is is he um see i'm really excited because i i love meeting people um that kind of think like I think. Uh, he went on to the Facebook group, the North Shore Boston Recovery, and I saw that he might have uh, responded to some post or something. It was a new person, and I looked. I was looking at his Facebook profile, and I was like, wow, this is a really cool person, and I messaged him. And then he came and visited us uh, like the next week, and um, we share a lot of you know similar interests um, and views. Um, and I just, I really like, I really like um, the stuff that he's doing. So we invited him to come on the show. Thank you. Um, well, I'm going to kick off with not quite my usual question because it probably is not relevant. <laughs> 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 um, and uh, Blake, if you don't mind, I, I'd like to just kind of ask you a little bit about maybe your recovery journey. Um, folks on here are sick of me talking about my crack house to monastery story so uh, it'll make a chance to this hear from someone else sure well my uh, recovery journey has basically been uh, in the beginning anyway initially challenging myself to do better for myself after years of struggling to overcome or to address honestly addiction and when that day appeared to me, it was something that had been already going on for quite a while because I kept telling myself that one day this will be over and it'll be something different. And when that day came unexpectedly, I was done. And I carry that sentiment to this day, 8-2103. And as a result of that, I got to experience a lot of emotion which is what happens when you put the abuse of drugs down. And I got to meet a lot of people. Some were genuine in their concern. And many of those people I carry with me either in memory because they're not around or in just my thoughts when I see or hear certain things that are familiar tunes that we want to share together because life as you know it moves on, you know, moves, things happen. You move away, uh, you just start experiencing things that cause you to move in a different direction. What caused me to move in a different direction as it relates to recovery is because in order to seek something, you have to let a lot of stuff go. And by that, I mean shedding a lot of traditional thinking and, and thoughts and move differently. Move to your own beat. and which is why I, uh, to this day, wear or carry this acronym, which is well known to everybody in the Lent community anyway, as far as recovery goes, and that's when others respond differently, which means it was personal to me that I not do what I used to do and to keep seeking because I am a seeker. There are things that I just want to know. And in order to know them, I ask questions. I observe people's surroundings. I want to experience different things. And so that spiritual formation was, is always what undergirds my position in life. I'm passionate about me as a person and how I can dictate my own rhythms of life and so they connect with others and connect to this bigger picture that's happening in life. Like, I like doing videos uh, with people, uh, taking pictures. Uh, whether it's the high in life or the low in life because they all coincide and they all have a value to them if you properly if, if that's properly understood and so that's how I connect the dots so everybody gets to see 
everything, not just the fun, happy part, but the ugly and the sad as well. So you can bring some chemical balance to the way we think, because sometimes we get stuck in this uh, type of thinking that kind of, you know, uh, distorts or dilutes our spiritual path it's by unrealistic, of, like unrealistic. Yeah, it's a lot of nonsense. Let me say what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're used to nonsense. Yeah, <laughs> let me say what it is. Yeah, but anyway, you know, I mean, I ruffle some fellas, but you know what? Hey, let it be what it is, but it's all for the better. You know, if I can better myself, I can at least help the next person who's in a not so much of that positive light. You know, let them see some of my energy, where it's coming from, and how I came to be. So, yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm a healthy influence, generally speaking, on people. You know, but everybody's got to make their own way, though. Got to make their own way. So, you know what, Blake? I have a question. Um, <laughs> well, no, it, 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 it's 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 got, it's going to be a it, it, a good question, and it we really try to focus on people's experience, like that transformation, right? Like everything we're talking about here on Dharma Talks is about transformation, and like we're non-biased, non-judgmental. Um, we just want people to be happy healthy and well like right. that is it like it it's part of buddhism like it says it right in you know like the the scriptures of all beings being you know happy healthy well um so the question i have is when you started this process like what was your relationship with spirituality and like has that has that changed over time uh i feel like the it was always there one it was something that I was unfamiliar with, but something that was always there. And that's what pretty much made me curious about this, uh, what I call energy, this unseen force that would always show me something that I could benefit from, but I had to work at it, which is why uh, I tend to say what things are versus, you know, lallygagging about it. Uh, so my spiritual formation I want to say through my trial and errors when they really started to take place and kind of point me in a direction even though I wasn't ready for that direction because I was still uh, running or ignoring those, those signatures that were being uh, manifest to me. Yet at some point when I finally took the reins or just let things be as they are and kind of moved in that direction when I put the drugs down, it was the, not the, it was the beginning of my spiritual formation, but not the apex of my spiritual formation. I want to say that took place a little later because I found myself siding with the underdog. I found myself siding with the person or the persons or the personalities that weren't necessarily the popular ones. And I said, yeah, there's something about this situation that I seem to always find myself aligned with. And as a result of that, I, I consider myself a champion of the underdog. Uh, and I'm not going to change that. I'm always going to be the champion of the underdog because oftentimes people that are down don't know how to fight back or don't know how to defend their own or don't have that spiritual energy to or to be a force within themselves, for themselves, and for others in the community. So uh, that, that kind of took place, Reese's apex, I want to say, when I began to hear things in these closed quarters, in these basement halls, and I'm shaking my head no on the inside while everybody's doing this, and I'm like, no, wait till you hear me. And once I got heard, it was like a blast. Uh, it was just raw, non-sugar coated truth. And when it's measured, when it's understood, it connected hand and glove. And again, it was always the underdog who said, thank you, Blake. It was always the people that didn't really, weren't sure about themselves that said, thank you. Uh, not all of them, but that type that came to me, you know, just to, let me know that, hey, thank you for what you do and who you are. And that gave me the uh, momentum to continue that path 
So it wasn't just all me, it was me plus those people, those mindsets, those personalities that I connected with, and I continue to connect with as the years have, have, have gone by. I've been able to travel, I've been able to experience other spiritual formations and, and, and social gatherings, and I, I will tell you that I can go anywhere and be amongst any people at any time and be in absolute comfort because it's who I am. And sometimes that ruffles feathers because you, when you bring that, when you bring that with you to a setting that's not used to that, you know, instead of honoring it or appreciating it, it's more like, oh no, what, what are you doing? You know, what, what, what are you bringing to the table here? But you know, it's, it's one of those things that's always been with Blake. So I see it before it happens and I kind of just, you know, get in where I fit in. And if it don't feel right to me, I have to make it known that this isn't right for me. Not only make it known, but why it's not right for my spirit and why I need to continue to be able to fly high, you know, instead of have my wings clipped by nonsense. Yeah, don't work for my spirit. So I was gonna say, um, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna give the floor to Sujatu, but I was gonna say, oh, um, say his name again, Sujatu. I've been practicing that for an hour now. <laughs> I had everything but that. Sujatu. Sujat Sujatsu. All right, three Shujatu, syllables. Yeah, Sujatsu. Yeah, Sujatsu. Yeah, I, I I I butcher his name. I did, so it doesn't uh, matter. Like, Sujatsu. All right. Um. So we're guys that stand up for the underdogs. We're underdogs. Um, and it's something you carry with you for the rest of your life. Um, and I'll say with uh, Sujatu coming out of the monastery and going out into the world to, to do service, learning what he learned from his um, Theravadan Buddhist masters. Um, you know, he did a, he, he's, he, he's done a lot of fighting for the people that we serve. I myself being that person being corrupted um, by my own addictions and by this world and uh, then being punished and coming back into this world and once again getting sick and being corrupted like I just you know I struggle with my problems standing up for the underdogs is what we believe in we believe that all human beings have this potential to not only be well within themselves but to give back and help you know the whole planet including the human race like we want to see people succeed um, so yeah, like that's, I think that's the thing that attracted to me you the most is you're a free thinker and you're standing up for the underdog. Um, all right, I'm gonna give the floor to Sujatu. <laughs> Sujatu. <laughs> it, uh, it was interesting for me, Blake, to hear you, uh, to hear you mention, you just mentioned the phrase let go or letting go. That's for anyone that, uh, for, for anyone that has any kind of knowledge of any Dharma teachings, Buddhist teachings, that's a, a, a well-known phrase. Um, but in, in, in my experience, a phrase that people don't understand, they, they, they talk about letting go, but what they really want to do is desperately hang on to, <laughs> to, to what they've got and what they know, whether that's good, bad or indifferent, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a comfort for people to hang on to that and, um, and the letting go is the, is the hard part. And, um, and it's also important for us to, to, I think it's important for all of us to put, to put our, to put the way we're, we're looking, we look at things, to put it into action. I think there's so many people, and um, I usually do a, just for your information, Blake, I, I usually do a five minute rant of, of, uh, against the Buddhist establishment, um, which I'm gonna try and avoid, but, um, but it kind of crosses over to any establishment. Um, there's an awful lot of uh, there's an awful lot of folks that uh, are very, very, very good at talking the talk, but when you call them out, you find they ain't no way they walk the walk. Um, so I'd like to thank you, thank just you. as a just as another human being, mm. because it's. Um, it's been tough. It's been tough. Marshall's had an awful lot on his plate with uh, with getting something running, and we and we finally have. Um, and we've had a lot of pushback. And I think the thing is that when you believe that 
there are multiple ways for folks to um, to get themselves into a better place. We can talk about recovery, we can talk about whatever you like, but <coughs> there are multiple ways, and I think um, that we realise that, and uh, we're getting good feedback on that now. And I have no interest in anyone, I really have no interest in, in any, in turning anyone into calling themselves a Buddhist or anything else, you know. Um, my thing from a personal point of view is A, trying to give folks the resources just to stay alive. Um, it's uh, an unfortunate but very true fact that dead folks don't do well in recovery. That's the way it is. Um, so from a personal point of view, I'm very big on uh, on starting there and then um, and then moving on from there and just giving folks from my point of view from giving folks some knowledge of some tools they might not actually know are available um, those tools happen to be Dharma based for me but um, but there are, are plenty of others and um, I think folks appreciate that in fact i know for a fact folks appreciate that and i'm not about to talk about any particular um i'm not about to talk about any particular case on here but i know for folks that so for for a fact that um you know folks are getting something out of the the the, the work that mainly marshall with my little bit of input um uh, and uh, and I say it every time, but the credit goes to Marshall. Marshall's the one that uh, Marshall's the one that got this up and running. Marshall's the one that dug me out of a hole in Michigan. Um, <laughs> so um, it, it's yeah, it, it's it's very uplifting to, to to when we meet folks that are that are along the same lines, not using the same tools, but along the same lines. Yeah. yeah. So. He just hit on, you hit on something very important. And uh, it goes back to our first conversation a few weeks ago when he was a quiet man. <laughs> uh, but as you were talking, I thought about freedom and creativity. Uh, oftentimes, unfortunately, in a lot of recovery-based anthems or themes, creativity is not something you hear. You hear a lot about freedom, but is it freedom based on the momentum of someone else's, but your own individual freedom? Because that's the ultimate spiritual for formation is to be free and, and let it take you where it's going to take you. Which is why I feel like anybody I come in contact with, if their search is for freedom, then I feel like I can be of help to that person or those persons and being creative. Uh, uh, being flexible in attitude or an attitude adjustment so people see, well, wait a minute. Why is he or she doing that? And I've been wanting to do that, but I find myself uh, not incapable, but because of my current situation, those energies that I'm surrounded by keep me shackled. Yeah. So me, I'm like, uh, I, I can't be shackled or, or I can't be free. There's no creativity, uh, you know, or whatever may be potentially for me. So as you were talking, all of this stuff is coming up, like spirituality, creativity, equals freedom to me. And that freedom's like, fly high, you know, and, and continue to express a lot of that energy. Other people too infected by that, that healthy, positive energy. I, th I, I, I really do think that's, that, that, that whole issue of freedom is, is very important. Um, I respect, I respect an active user's freedom to carry on using. Mm, that's good. Uh, and um, because I think we all know that uh, none of us are putting anything down until we're ready to do it. Yes, <laughs> you said it. <laughs> until you we're ready it. to do it. Now, now, now <laughs> does that mean that we say, oh, right, okay, no, you, you, you're not interested in, you're not interested in recovery, you're, you're carrying on using, and we turn our back on that person? Not for me, it doesn't. Now, I know for a fact that does happen. Mm. Um, 
but it's about that freedom. It's about it's about that freedom. Yes. And also, when you just when when you when an individual decides that they want to change the way things are going, then they deserve that freedom to choose the path that they want to take. Mm. Whether that path be um, total abstinence of, of, of any of, of the use of anything at all, whether it means they want to moderate, whether it, it's all about keeping folks alive and happy for me. Yeah. You know, that, if you look at someone who's an active addiction, just watch them for maybe 10 minutes, and I've done a lot of it. Lowell, Worcester, Philly, LA, here, Miami. If you watch people and all you see is that, then you miss out on it. If you ask them, hey, what happened? And you ask the next person, hey, what happened? Before you know it, you hear the momentum of a similar tune. And in that, I see the identity. Because I tell people, yeah, I, I, I've been clean for this amount of time. And you know, well, why do you do this? For this reason here, so I can have this experience right here with you who don't think that nobody cares, who don't think that people that just drive by hitting the shot, the screenshots, here's somebody who does just the opposite, who's showing you why there is a better way. Just by, because people will tell you exactly what's going on with them, how long it's been, how many family members they have, what they've lost along the way, and everything else. So it's like going to a meeting. It's like hearing a newcomer talk for the first time about their experiences because they're things that I can identify with. And when you can identify with someone, they're going to be attracted to that because they now have a reason to return. When they see you, they give you a double look. Hey, there's uh, I, Tujaki over there. <laughs> 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 or, or there's Marshall. Or there's so-and-so. Or there's Blake. Or there's Jim. You know, so they have reason to give you a second look because you gave them a reason to be attracted to you. And, but when you don't have boots on the ground, when you're just not there, then they can't see, they don't get that experience. So again, when people start talking about that stuff, I'm like, gone. Because there's so much there that I've experienced for myself. That's why I say you gotta be free to share these experiences so everybody gets a piece of the pot and there's always room for a person to say, oh, well, thank you, you know, and, and, and come on in. You know, you tell me how we can make this better. I want to hear from you. They start looking around like, me? Who am I? They, because they're not sure their value. I'm sure your value because I was there. So I know what's potentially behind what we don't see. But by ignoring them and not talking to them, you don't get that. But if you listen to them, it's like, wow, you hear all kind of value come from them and, 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 and things that, we identify with yeah so like and like this has just kind of been like a common thread lately um, and it really hits a chord with me um, in the term in the word value uh, you know and it, uh, our society is really good at devaluing human beings um, and putting value where there really isn't much and that's the one thing I think that uh, you know hurts a lot of people especially with addictions is they devalue the person they say um, everything that's wrong with them, you know, and just they, they really, you know, tell them they're sick, you got a disease, you know, there's something wrong with you. Uh, and it just causes so much hurt and pain. That was my experience. And um, it's not really the case. The case of a person that struggles with addiction is somebody that's trying to fix a problem. They don't feel good. They want to feel better. Mm. And it makes sense because it works for a little while. But addiction causes problems because it spirals out of control. And at that point, there's very little a person can do. That's why people need help. Um, and then when the help comes in the form of somebody shaming that person or making them feel bad or just reminding them of, like, you know, that they got problems, uh, a lot of times that's not effective for a lot of people. And I know it wasn't effective for me because I'm a person that will really fight against anybody that wants to put me down or make me feel worse than I already do. And uh, I think that the solution, you know, being a person with, uh, of understanding who's been through it is 
letting people instead know what's right with them. Because you're right, they, like you said, Blake, that value exists. That value is there. So you really kind of key in on what's right with that person. Because um, there's not much difference than a person that's in active addiction and out of active ad addiction besides them putting that drug in their body, whatever it may be, alcohol included. Um, and then once, once that behavior stops and that energy shifts and it goes into something more productive, that person's life improves. So there never really was anything wrong with that person. They were just trying to fix a problem by creating a problem down the road for themselves. Um, and being able to show people that they are cared for, they are valued, they are important. Like that's the most important thing, um, I think. And uh, it's something that we really, really focus on. You know, and I know that's something that you're, you're a person that you're out there, you're, you're talking to people and you're trying to let the world know that, you know, that these people have s so much beauty and value and potential. And uh, that's something I resonate with. And I know Sujatu resonates with it because that's his modus operandi over there. It is. I, I mean, I strongly believe that people need people. And they need people to meet them where they're at. People don't need people telling them what they're supposed to be doing. People don't need people making judgments. Sometimes you can just sit with someone and say nothing. Mm. And you can change their world by sitting and saying nothing and, and you can change your own. People need people. And um, I mean, that, that was my motivation for leaving the paradise that is supposedly Thailand. <laughs> 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 because um, yeah, people people need people and people appreciate people appreciate when someone takes time out of their day to just meet them where they are. Without any judgments, without any without any trying to push them one way or the other. Yeah. Just let just meet them where they are. And uh, that changes lives. That changes lives, I know that for sure. So, Blake, we only have a few minutes left. Is there anything you wanted to discuss or things that you, you know, like you, what you can promote, anything that you're doing? Well, um, I, I have a, a few projects that I'm working on. Uh, all of it, in one respect or another, deals with the spiritual formation or lack of spiritual formation as relates to society and uh, I haven't decided which one I'm going to share first I'm just kind of like letting it all sit and because when I get too much into it I have so I'm gonna have this and this and this and I'm like well what do I start do I get into the editing and it just you know so as not to overwhelm myself, these upcoming projects, uh, all of them have a, a recovery-based method to them. So it's the matter of me getting the time to set these in motion where I can share them with other people on my uh, YouTube channel or uh, here or wherever that may be, but, uh, yeah, uh, but TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're on the TikTok now, too, it's, it's like, it's begrudgingly. <laughs> but you know something, though? Like anything, simplify it, you know, put it out there, and just remember that. That was the first time I ever did that. Before you know it, you know, uh, it starts to build, and it starts to build, and it starts to build. And you look back like, wow, I participated in this, now look at it. You know, it's like anything. Effort, consistency, yeah. But that, that's it, though. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we could go on for, uh, we could probably go on for hours, um, but our time's just about up. Blake, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. We really yeah, do. Thank you, Blake. Marshall, appreciate thank you. you. Mm -hmm. Um, so thank you folks, we're going to love you and leave you and we'll probably see you again in uh, probably a month's time. Take care. <laughs>